Hey, it's Father Taylor here. It's a crazy, wonderfully beautiful Friday, November 6th, where it's like 65 degrees outside, and I'm going to have a great weekend. So maybe this is like the consolation prize for a 2020 that has just had more drama and twists and turns than we may have uh, bargained for. And we're not done yet. So, so three things I want to talk to you about. Uh, some of them are pretty important. First of all, I want to talk to you about this Sunday. I feel like the guy that used to do those uh, race car um, uh, commercials. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday eternity. But this Sunday, first of all, the weather is great. It's it just, you just don't know if we're going to get a Sunday like this. So the 745 service is not at 745. It's at 8. So you can virtually sleep in. But it's at 8 o'clock. And uh, there's really... You know, if you'd like to come, don't worry about the numbers. We're not going to get that many people, but please come. If you haven't been to an outdoor service, this is the one. This is the one you need to come to. They are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they're extremely uh, deeply spiritual and worshipful. And just to be with other folks in our church, uh, at first, you know, we thought, well, it won't be quite the same. I'm telling you, it, there's something healing. and uh, restorative to just meeting together. So the first service on Sunday, for anybody who wants to come, is at 8 a.m., 8 a.m. in the parking lot. Designate parking, bring your own chair, uh, but 8 a.m. We wear masks the whole time, we're distance. Uh, the crew that comes all the time, they have it down, so you just, if, if it's your first time, just come, you'll figure it out, it's really clear. We have an usher, it'll be really great. I'd like as many people, as can feel safe enough to come, to get up a little early and to come out. If we haven't seen you since, good Lord, since eight months ago, you need to come. You need to come so we can all see you live, that you, you don't exist simply in uh, two dimensions on a screen. So please make the effort to come Sunday, eight o'clock in the morning. Okay. Second announcement has to do with uh, the in-person part of our 945 service. We will not be meeting in person. We're taking a break from meeting in person. And let me explain to you why. The question came up, should I uh, be wearing a mask at the 945 service if we have people there? Now, I was going on the early, some earlier reports about distance. Uh, and I was, with the way we set the, the pre-designed seats up, when people register, you know, they just don't pick up their own seats. We have them all pre-chosen, like you come in on a seating chart. So I was keeping between 20 and 25 feet minimum from other people. And I felt like, hey, I don't have a mask on, but we have the windows open. There's a nice cross breeze. You know, I think we're relatively safe. Some other folks said, you know, I think you need to rethink that. I think you need to, you know, wear a mask. And the question came, well, what would it be like if I was wearing a mask covering, you know, half of my face, and then I'm trying to project in such a way that you can hear me clearly online. And so we, we went around the barn on it a couple of times, and I said, I'm just going to call the epidemiologist at um, Farmington Valley Health Department. This is the third time that we as leadership folks have called. Uh, we, we just don't look at data or something we heard on the news. We have been calling the actual epidemiologist. Once I called the state epidemiologist, and uh, went over some, some questions that I had with him about services and in-person things. And then uh, he referred us to the Farmington Valley folks. So they have been great about information. So I called them up. Their head of community services was absolutely clear. And listen to this. She said that the Farmington Valley health folks, their major concern is to keep, do two, do two things keep schools open and keep businesses open. And so in order to kind of deal with the fact that you have kids and staff at schools meeting, what they're, what they're trying to do for the rest of the community is to eliminate as much as possible any ways, any uh, uh, um, undisciplined ways of getting together that could cause spread. And they're really focused on keeping the schools open. Doesn't that make sense? Like, like, like for, for that to happen, we probably all have to be careful for the sake of that and business is open. And here's what she said, that the rate 
is increasing rapidly in the Farmington Valley. I said, hey, well, not Simsbury. You know, we haven't seen anything really happening in Simsbury. Here's what she said, that she had just gotten off the phone with two churches, one in Farmington, one in Avon, that she asked them, she, they had to quarantine. Anytime there's a live service and someone who tests positive uh, can be traced back to having attending a service, anybody who's at that service has to go into quarantine. So she said she just, two churches just got you know, hit with quarantine. Two, she said that while it's Farmington and Avon, the next town that the Farmington Valley uh, health folks are most concerned about, the next one is East Granby. And so, as you can see, she said, it's beginning to surround you where you are. And so we think that uh, very soon we're going to see the incidents simply going to spread into Simsbury and where we are in Tariffville. So of all people, we want you to be as careful as you can be. Then I said, wow, well, with Thanksgiving coming up, you know, you must have quite a concern. And then she said, well, we are tremendously concerned because of people visiting family gatherings, and college kids coming home, we believe that like in the weeks that follow Thanksgiving, we're gonna see another climb more than what we've already seen. So it pains me. I mean, you don't know how, how much it pains me that we can't meet in person. There are people for whom their major connection to God and which kind of reorients them to God and to seeing God in their life and just the main way that happens for them is meeting in person in a Sunday worship service. Uh, there are other people, we got lots of people in our church who have deep prayer lives and they, they connect with small groups and they are, have ongoing spiritual life in a way that church is part of that, but it's not always the most, the biggest thing. But there are some people from this is it. And I don't, you know, I just don't know how, how are folks dealing with all the stresses and anxieties uh, of 2020, including the pandemic and everything else that's going on. So as a pastor, and I'm concerned about people, particularly the people who are on the edges of our community, I just, it just, it's, it's really hard. And so I would love to be finding new and uh, exciting ways to get getting people together. And uh, the folks that have gathered, we haven't had a large group. I think the largest uh, of the two, two times we gathered in person has been 10, which isn't large. But uh, even those people are greatly encouraged just to be able to see each other and meet together in the church that they know. And so it really pains me. But uh, for me, given what I've heard from the Farmington Valley health folks, uh, it, it's not worth the risk of somebody getting sick uh, and having to quarantine everybody and quarantine or building. So, uh, so the in-person in -person gatherings at 945 are temporarily um, suspended. And uh, we're keeping a, a tight watch on the numbers and how that goes. And when we feel it's safe again, we will resume. Which is the other reason why I really want you to come out to, at eight o'clock in the morning, um, particularly if we haven't seen you for a long time. I really want you just to bite the bullet, get up early like a work school day, drink a cup of coffee, come on into church. It's a really, it's a great meeting. And it, it can't be that long because I got a, a, a group of people come at 845. So, uh, so if you're worried about like, what, would I, what was it gonna be like? It's gonna be great. That's what it's gonna be like. So please come at eight. And I regret to tell you that the 945 in person is temporarily suspended. Now, there's the second piece. On uh, the 15th, which is now two weekends, this weekend being the 8th and then Sunday the 15th, that's the day which we generally call, since I've been here, Celebration Sunday. You have to understand, I believe what the scripture says is that giving is simply a part of worship. It's not like a, like a, like a burden. It, it's, like, it's like the pinnacle of, of entering into worship and saying, I believe in you so much and I'm so thankful for all that you've done uh, I offer this to you, just like we would have offered, uh, made an offering, you know, at an altar, that we come and offer this as a sacrifice. So at the heart of the word worship, in Hebrew at least, is the word sacrifice, is to give back to God something that costs us something. That it's a, actually a sacrifice, not an extra, a sacrifice. So for me, giving, like, like even if you weren't giving to a project, the act of giving 
is, is one of the deepest expressions of faith, of your faith and relationship to God. So I always tell people, you know, don't worry about like, what are we giving toward or, or how does this go? But the, the first thing is you give toward God who's given everything. The scripture says that he who was rich, Jesus, made himself poor for our behalf. He's not asking that you become poor, but he's just saying it's part of your discipline and it's part of your worship to be able to give generously back to God in your pledges. So, so that's the primary part of giving. Your faithful, I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, if you'd ask me, uh, make a prediction, you know, how will giving go during this time of the pandemic? I'd have thought, uh, well, I thought we've been looking at layoffs and wondering if we could continue. Uh, because, you know, our, our budget has always, you know, here at Trinity, God's been very faithful. We've, we haven't had a super overage in budgets. We generally are not quite there, and God kind of has helped us through. And I just thought, man, if people aren't meeting in person, what's going to happen? But you guys have been amazingly faithful, amazingly faithful. Um, and so that's been very helpful. So here's the thing. On the 15th, you know, this is your opportunity to, again, uh, be thankful to God as this act of worship for the sake of the gift of our community. That's been our theme this year. And so pledge, you know, you're going to get a pledge card in the mail next week. And there's going to be one of those letters. You know, I, I sweat bullets over writing those letters, trying to be as uh, what I think is what the Lord wants to say as much as possible. So, so at least, you know, give the letter a quick look, but be praying about your giving. And those pledge cards are going to be really big for us of how we see 2021. And so I'm just asking you to, to in the midst of all things, you know, really in the heart of your heart of hearts, consider what you might give. And we are still going to have a celebration Sunday, even though we can't meet indoors in person uh, in the church for worship. You say, well, how is that possible? When that church service is over, and I'm saying we're going to, this is going to be at 11 o'clock, we are going to drive in. I'm asking you to show up at church. I mean, I, yes, get in your car. You know, it's Sunday. Uh, you have to change out of those pajamas, even though it's a, uh, you know, when you're watching it Zoom, you know, half of you are probably still in your pajamas. But Get out of your pajamas, grab the kids, get into the car, get your pledge card, and come to church. And we are going to come in, and uh, we are going to see each other. Some of you may just want to come in and drive through, and there'll be people there. We'll be celebrating. Paula may be playing some music outdoors, and we're, again, if we get some great weather. Uh, but we will see each other. I can't tell you how important it is to see each other. But some of you may drive in. Some of you may want to go and park and uh, bring chairs just so you can wave and you can chat at an appropriate distance so we can celebrate together. I mean, it's, it's the best we can do. So I'm asking you, it'll be a sacrifice for, for some of you, but uh, give us Sunday, give us the 15th, come and celebrate and express that through your um, through giving. And uh, it's, it's not a bill, it's not a fee, it's an offering to Jesus who gave everything for you. So anyway, so that's the 15th. Finally, this one's a little easier to, to put out there. Christmas reads. Da -da, remember Christmas. So like, wow, what will happen for us for Christmas? But, but just for now, let's talk about reads. The 15th, that celebration Sunday is the deadline for ordering your reads. You know, we, we go through a lot of reads. Like God comes down from Maine. Uh, Amanda goes through a tremendous amount of time sorting them all out as you know, and then you guys get to come and pick them up. So that's happening. We're still doing that. So look in the e-blast for the written part for the details about those reads, uh, because the deadline is the 15th, and that's being sent into the office. Daryl, who's been, you know, carrying the, so many things these days during COVID, uh, our computer, uh, the motherboard, uh, basically burned out on her midweek. And uh, so we had to send away for another motherboard and we're wait, still waiting for that. So Carol has been, um, I don't know, she's been like doing her whole job off of a laptop that she's trying to, to get into our system with. So, so you can pray for her too. But uh, she's, got, she's covering all those details. So go ahead and, uh, and take a look at the e-blast and have all the details you need for ordering reads. All right, now here's, here's an extra. I'm just going to check my text just to make sure uh, this is really happening. 
so here it is. Tomorrow, tomorrow at, tomorrow, I believe it's at, uh, I believe it's at one o'clock, it might be two. Go ahead and text me uh, because I didn't, you know, I'm not the detail guy. But some of us are gonna gather at the church. We just, we have uh, five or six brand new families. And I'm trying, how do you get the families to meet the rest of you? So we, we just made like almost like a flash mob. We're trying to get some fit, those families to come in. We're inviting vestry members. But I say, hey, let's, let's invite everybody to come. So come over to the church. Uh, Call Amanda, Carolyn, or me, uh, and I'll, I'll find out how embarrassing. But uh, we're, it's either at one or two. We're just going to go hang out in the church, you know, at the church a little bit just to see each other because it's going to be 70 degrees tomorrow. Uh, some people with kids may take your kids over to the Towerfield School because they've got the playground over there because some of these new families got some little guys. So they may go over there for a bit and come back. But really, the, whole, the primary idea was so that some of our new folks could meet some of our folks who have already been here. It's very spontaneous. Who knew we were gonna get like, you know, uh, spring weather in the middle of November. So anyway, so there's your e-blast video for this week. God bless you, please feel, feel free to call me. Uh, we are praying for you, I'm praying for you. And the folks at the, our, our two prayer services, eight and eight are praying for you too. Uh, and we even had another group go in this past week after a week of healing prayer. And there was a healing group who were praying for people this week. So. We are asking God's blessing and best for you in these uh, tricky and difficult times, but God is still present, which means even in the midst of the chaos, God is still good, and that's who we're clinging to. So bye for now.